One of the best parts about being a filmmaker is being able to take inspiration from something and then creating something new with that inspiration. But what happens when you get the opportunity to directly adapt your favorite movie? My name's Nate, I am the director of An Homage to the Crow, and this is how we shot it. So first things first, how did we get this gig and why did we pick it up? It all started with a DM from Nick, the performer in the video and a local guitarist who wanted to recreate the rooftop solo scene from The Crow as a promotional video for Halloween. Nick had tried doing it before, but it didn't end up working out, so he decided to hit us up about a second go. After hearing about the gig, I was so quick to hop on board. See, The Crow is not only my favorite movie, but it's also my favorite comic, and so this would be one of the few times in my life if any, that I would get to adapt this work and show people how I interpreted the story. I brought Nico on as my cinematographer and Joey on as my gaffer. So with all that figured out, it was time to get to work. First of all, we had to figure out what exactly we were doing. Nick wanted a recreation of a scene from the original movie, so I got my Crow Blu-ray and got to studying. I put together a shot list compiling every shot from the original movie and ended up with six shots. It was then that I met with Nico, Joey, and Nick and decided to talk about some of the first major obstacles, the budget and the location. Contrary to popular belief, rooftops are not easy to access, especially when you're from a small town and you're carrying around a bunch of film equipment. The four of us tossed around two potential options for shooting. Option number one, an alleyway, would give us the same general atmosphere if lit right, but would sacrifice the rooftop element that made the solo in the film unique. It's easy, it's accessible, but there's a loss of aesthetic there. A parking garage would give us a deep cityscape depth that a rooftop could also give us, but generally speaking, parking garages are public areas, and it wouldn't exactly be easy to get, you know, law enforcement on our side with this. While these weren't exactly bad ideas, Nick and I really wanted to keep the rooftop. We're going to the Crow shooting set! Yeah, I'm, not, I'm just tagging along, I'm not doing this shit. Why can't he play a fucking drum solo? That would be way more badass. <laughs> so we just pulled up, and uh, we're gonna have to walk, because if you look over here, there's a whole ass parade going on. So here we are. Great. We have arrived. This will potentially be the set of the Crow video. Some sort of fucking generator of some sort. And there's like graffiti and shit on the walls. The fuck does that shit say? No fucking cool. Ike. Ikea? <laughs> Shot that way, so. You guys can see the city and shit. But yeah, this is location one. We were able to get what we wanted in the end. You see, our friends over at Luis Noleta's Tea House and Cafe graciously allowed us to film on their rooftop after they closed. And so after doing some scouting, Nick and I decided that that was what we were gonna do. That would get the best look. We don't have but we, I mean, we have so many different options for shots around here. So it's like, yeah. yeah. We could get up there today. I would have probably started planning out shots. So we didn't get to record the entire encounter because the camera died. But uh, this is what I'm doing today. I just got a guitar. <laughs> this is gonna be the guitar that I fucking smash. Rocky gave this to me. I guess it's like some guitar he had whenever he was a kid. Uh, but yeah, it's getting fucked up. So I've been playing guitar for about 10 years now. I've never fucking demolished a guitar like I have or that I'm about to do. I fucked that all up. Like I'm about to do for this guitar. It was dirty as shit whenever Rock gave it to me, and I'm bringing it back to life just to kill it again. Yeah, it's gonna be really fucking fun. Got black spray paint right here. And, uh, I don't know, I've never done this, so I'm just about to go to town. Alright, we're back. Uh, I only did one coat. All that's left is just to restrain this motherfucker. Uh, premium editing skills here. The next step was to decide exactly what we were going to shoot. Although there were only six shots in the original scene, they were pretty limited, mainly being different angles of Eric playing the guitar dispersed throughout parts of the movie. There were also a lot of different drone shots following the crow, which we really did not have the budget for. After a chat with Nick, we decided that instead of going for a full recreation, an homage would be the better route for this project. Not only would we be able to have the recreated shots from the original movie, but we would also be able to sprinkle in our own little ideas and give this project a unique identity to it. I also put together 
together a mood board featuring panels from the original comic and presented them to Nick just so that we could find out what exactly the tone was that we wanted to go for. Did we want to follow more of the movie or did we want to follow more of the comic? The end result was actually a mixture of both. At the last minute, we actually ended up deciding to shoot for black and white so that we could pay an homage to the original coloring of the comic and also add just a little dash of extra edge to the video. With all of our pre-production done, it was time to shoot. After realizing there wasn't actually a way to access the roof, Joey purchased a ladder and some rope and we got to climbing. We then carefully navigated ourselves over live, yes, live, wires, and began setting up our first shot. Yeah, we're gonna go, I think we'll go ahead and just start off with these. Maybe one now, basically. Um, and then I think we should go to the back. The two backs. So we are about to Me went purple. <laughs> We start on the back light. Oh. We're not going to need much work on the fill light because that fill light is all the way at 3%. We're about to film the first shot right now. I'm really excited. So the, the We're getting beginning the close of the ups of here. his fingers right on the board. Ready. Hey, my Spanish teacher gave me an extension. <laughs> You think we're doing better than the, than the one last time? Oh, well, dude. Hey, hey, so? one I mean, I think mine's still better, bro, but. Uh, <laughs> this shot looks really good. I think the only thing that I would implement is maybe starting down here. Okay. And then moving up here when he starts, like. You know what I mean? Like this part, like where he's yeah. like, okay. We started off easy because our good friend Steven was on the way and we didn't want to be knee deep in a lighting setup before he got there. See, Steven has a drone and he offered to come out and shoot some coverage for us. Here's footage of that. While we ultimately didn't end up using any of Steven's footage in the final product, we're very thankful that he came by and we look forward to working with him again in the future. Thanks, Steven. It's a weird looking bird. After we left, we got cooking on the rest of our shot setups. These pants do nothing for my ass. <laughs> I disagree. These are women's pants, but they do nothing for my fucking ass. Striking light too. <laughs> We're C stands right now, man. Ready to go? Action. What we were doing is we were blocking out these like flares on the side. Yeah. I don't like what it's gonna lose that. Yeah. That way it makes it like more hard to see. Someone said, just be like, hey, by the way, no, hey, like, playing. we have time to see. Playing, playing. playing. Just now rip it out. Um, take it off. Yeah. yeah. I want to see, I want to see like the full movement. Okay. Just to, just to see what we got. Yeah, just be like, hey, we have somebody else to make fun of you on the side. All right. Do your levels. You just have what the sound is. Smash. Am I too out of frame? No, you're perfect. You're right at the lower third. Very nice. Dude, the hair. Holy fuck. I feel like I can see myself hesitating a little bit. You want to try to do it one more time? Again? You think you can do we it better? We got time. Yeah, we got, okay, yeah. Let me we, try to get it one more time. I what? want to try to get a little bit more aggressive. Yeah. yeah. Everything else was good except that. Very. Do you feel comfortable? Well, I have to change. Dude, it's not even 9 o'clock yet. We're so good on time. Oh, yeah. He's, He's smashing. Like, smashing the guitar. We have, we have like 1 a.m. Not really, though. Station. Dude, that's fucking Dude, that was good. a confidence, dude. Incredible. Dude, he did there the song like it thumbs. He did the song like it thumbs. Yeah. And this one also has like a heavy back light. Okay, I'll, I'll set up the splash again. Yeah. Yo, it's David Rios Films. <laughs> 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 
Thanks to our shot list, we were able to plow through most of the shots and finished ahead of schedule. Nico and I knew exactly how we wanted the shots to look, and with Joey on as our gaffer, setups were a breeze. It also helped that the two packs of monster energy that I brought for the crew was keeping us on our toes the whole night. Once we got all that we needed on the roof, it was time to head back down to the ground and get the last shot of the night. The guitar smash. There it is. Oh shit, that felt so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Dude, goodness. my guitar, what the fuck? I didn't say you could do that. <laughs> I actually ended up keeping a piece of the guitar um, just cause I mean, it's it's a it's a cool conversation starter and keepsake. Uh, not really important, but I thought I would just share that with y'all. After finishing up, it was time to part ways and head over to the editing room to tackle the bulk of the project. For the most part, putting together the clips was pretty simple, but the real challenge was finding a way to evoke the mood that I wanted for this project. Simply switching to black and white was not enough to get the dreary noir look I wanted. I did a lot of messing around with shadows and contrast and grain in order to reflect the art from James O'Barr's comic, which had lots of areas filled with black ink and harsh shadows and just a general big amount of contrast altogether. I even tried going for a vintage VHS look for the video, but my computer went on the fritz and with a tight October 29th deadline, it wasn't worth the hassle. After hours of editing, project after project, cut after cut, and making sure that that moon that we put in post didn't look too weird, it was finally done. An homage to the crow. For reference, Nick started off with this, and this is what we gave him. Shooting this video gave us a very fun exploration into adaptations and how although something might already exist, somebody can come in with a new idea and put a new twist on an existing idea to ultimately form a new idea. In a world where adaptations are currently dominating the film industry, shoots like this remind us that going back to something's original roots and building up from there can create something new entirely. And that's the beauty of adaptation. Because even though something exists, this can exist at the same time. Taking an existing idea and putting a new twist on it is not a new concept at all. Shoots like this allow us to take something that exists already and show how art can be interpreted in many different ways. This final project ended up not being the movie or the comic and ended up being its own thing and I think that that's pretty cool. If you liked our homage to the crow and want to see more, leave a comment down below saying what you would like to see us do next. And well, if you didn't like our homage, well, some like it, I guess.